A lot of people don't know this, but there is a small town in North Idaho that had a dark past that was so bad, it stained the reputation of Idaho as a whole as being a very racist state. And even though that issue was corrected almost 20 years ago, that reputation persists. So stick around because that's what I'm going to talk about. Hayden, Idaho's dark past, but their very bright future. Hi guys, my name is Trent and I'm a real estate agent here in Idaho. If you are looking for more information about what it's like to live, eat, sleep, work, and play, and buy real estate here in Idaho, well, this is the channel for you. So make sure you tap that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so every time we come out with a new video, you get notified. And seriously, every single week, in fact, every day this week, I have been getting calls, emails, texts from people just like you watching these videos, wanting to get more information about what it's like moving to and living in Idaho. So if this is you, please make sure you just give me a call, shoot me a text or an email, day, nights, weekends, it doesn't matter. I'm here to help people get set up in this wonderful place to live. So today we are going to be covering the dark past, but the very bright future of Hayden, Idaho. So let's dive in. Back in the 1970s, there was a man by the name of Richard Butler, who was a retired engineer. He decided after traveling through Idaho that he wanted to buy 20 acres just north of Hayden Lake and open up a compound and church where he can preach hate about Aryan nations and white supremacy. That slowly started to grow, and back then in the 1970s, North Idaho wasn't that populated, especially up in Hayden. So as long as he just kept to himself, didn't cause any harm, Idaho had and still has a very strong live and lit live mentality. That's why a lot of people like moving here. But back in the 80s, that did not stop there. They started to come into town. They would have marches and parades down Sherman Avenue. They started to try to recruit people and spread their message of hate. Now, this was going too far. People started to speak out against it, and there were several bombings in the area from people that were speaking out, but there wasn't enough evidence to pin it on the Aryan Nation group to, for Richard Butler's thugs. So unfortunately, they couldn't get shut down. So the marches continued, but a task force got put together by some Kootenai County residences, uh, one of them being Tony Stewart. And what they would do during these marches, knowing that, hey, we can't stop them from marching, they have the right to do a march and, and have a parade. So what they did is they would do activities and events for free all around town away from downtown Coeur d'Alene so that people wouldn't actually come down and hear their messages of hate. They also got local businesses to donate money to human rights organizations for every single minute that Richard Butler and his thugs were marching downtown. So after a 24 minute march, they had raised $34,000 that was donated to human rights groups. And for me guys, this is not ancient history. When my parents brought me here in 1992, they were still actively doing these parades in downtown Sherman. And when I went to the Silver Lake Mall for the first time, there was a young gentleman, not too much older than me, in a full-blown Nazi SS officer uniform trying to recruit me and my friends. I actually went up and talked to him because I, I'm thinking to myself, is this guy in Halloween costume? Like, what is happening here? But he truly believed that the Holocaust was made up by the Jews to get sympathy and to try to suppress Aryan races. I mean, it just blew my mind because as a homeschooler, I learned about World War II. I knew about what Hitler did in the Holocaust and with the concentration camps. It was just a wild sight to see. But I also respected the fact that this town understood the Constitution and believed that, hey, everyone has the right to worship and believe whatever religion they want, even though it was a message of hate. But in 1999, the Aryan nations went too far. A family was driving by the compound. They were of Native Amer American descent and their car backfired right in front of the compound. So the guards outside started shooting at the car, jumped in a truck, ran the car off the road and held the family at gunpoint. 
Luckily, they weren't killed, and that was all that needed to happen for some high-profile attorneys to get involved, and they were able to sue Richard Butler for $6.2 million, and his compound was part of that judgment. The family ended up selling the, the compound to a philanthropist who allowed the fire department to use it to, uh, to, to practice uh, burning stuff down. So they burnt all of the structures down. They cut down the trees that had swastikas in them. And the philanthropist ended up donating it to North Idaho College, and they turned it into Peace Park and put a, a moratorium where no one could live on that land or build on that land for 20 years. The message being that, hey, this land has been experiencing hate for 20 years and it needs to rest. Now, the reason I share this story is because throughout that time that we were dealing with this, the media portrayed Idaho as being a place for racists to come and, and be accepted and embraced. And that's just not the true story. The town hated it. They did not like the fact that they were marching. They did not like the fact that they were being seen as embracing racists, but they also understood that the constitution protected these people from being able to, or for being able to do that. And, and they didn't want to break the constitution because they know that that's a slippery slope. So in times like these that we're living in, it's important to remember the past and understand that yes, tolerance needs to happen, but you also can win by being active and creative and coming up with strategies to detract from the hate. And I certainly do not want that to be repeated. There has been stories about some groups up here that are trying to get that going again, but the fact is, is that Aryan Nation compound was extremely organized and there would be massive groups that would come up there. Now you might have one or two people that are on the internet trying to spread their message of hate. And my message to them is North Idaho or any part of Idaho is not your stronghold for hate. We're not going to accept that anymore. So what is Hayden, Idaho like now and what is it going to look like in the future? Now, guys, Hayden, Idaho is one of my favorite places. It's one of the most beautiful towns in Idaho. They have the beautiful Hayden Lake, which is gorgeous summer or winter time. There's really good fishing. It's awesome for swimming because it's not as big as Lake Coeur d'Alene and Pend Oreille, so it gets warmer faster. Uh, you have a large area where you can do wake surfing. There's lots of places to live right on the lake and it's being developed still right around Hayden Lake up in the Rimrock area. There's a lot of developments being built. Um, as you can see on the video here, there are some amazing amazing homes being built by places like Copper Basin, Rosenberger. These custom craftsmen uh, construction companies are building just absolutely incredible homes. I've been in some inside some of these homes and they are just gorgeous from top to bottom and they butt up right to the forest. Almost any time you drive up into Hayden, into that area, you're going to see deer, you're going to see turkey, and sometimes you get lucky, you get to see some elk or moose. So the city of Hayden, they have some big plans. They are keeping up with the growth so they're expanding, they're increasing the industrial complex area up along 95 and Government Way. So it's really inviting to a lot of really good businesses, which is what we need. We need more jobs to help with this growth. Uh, they are building some really amazing developments all around Hayden Lake, and there are talks about revitalizing a downtown and also trying to build a new downtown off of 95 and Lancaster. So Hayden has a very, very bright future. I think that it's going to be eventually connected with Coeur d'Alene, Hayden, then Athol, Bayview, Sandpoint, and it's just going to be a really large, beautiful area. So guys, that's it from me. If you're interested in getting moved up here, please make sure you reach out day, nights, weekends, shoot me a text, email, or call. If I don't answer, I will definitely get back to you. I love helping people get moved to this area because honestly, I've been here for 30 years and it's such an amazing place and I love seeing this growth. I mean, it can be challenging at times, don't get me wrong, the traffic and some people aren't liking this too much, but seeing the opportunity that's coming with this is exactly what this place needs. And if you had never heard this story, if you had heard that Idaho is kind of a racist place and Aryan nations were here, if this is new information to you, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. Let let me know if you're concerned that Idaho is going to go back into that and be 
become a place for, for racists to, to come and preach their message of hate. I personally don't think it's going to happen. I think people saw what took place in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they do not want that again. So make sure you tap that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and like this video if you thought it was good. And until the next one, guys, I will see you later.